All right, you guys, I'm making this tutorial because I got a lot of requests on how to make my um, nameplate necklaces. I really only use one, let's see, Pixar. I really only use two apps, but if I'm adding a character or image or something like that, I'll use three apps. But today I'm just gonna show you how to do just a simple nameplate necklace, just the name. Um, so, what you're going to do first is you're going to go to Pixart Studio app. And then you're going to go to the plus button here in the center. Scroll all the way down to where you get to color backgrounds. Click the white one. And then you're going to go to text. You hit text. And then I'm making the necklace for my friend. So we're going to use hers, her name. So we're going to do um, Lola. And I already found a font that I like. So anyway, we're going to go to color and we're going to choose black. And then I'm going to go to the font. Let's see, which font was it? Um, let's go through and find it. I can't remember the actual name of it. Oh, here it is. Um, this one right here is called Dolly Script. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make two of these. So we're gonna click the little layered button up here in the top right hand corner. And then we're gonna hit duplicate. Cause we're gonna need a shadow and then we're gonna act, need the actual um, name to go on top of the shadow, which will be the plate. So um, let's do the plate first. So then I'm gonna go to color and this is just my preference of color. Um, I'm going to go to gold and then I'm going to go to stroke and then I'm also going to choose gold as well. Okay, like that. And then you can change the size of the, the shadow or the plate that the font is going on top of. So then you're going to take this. I like to make this gray because I usually use like a silver blinky looking color for my necklaces. And then we're going to send this to the front. So we're going to hit move up. And then we're just going to slide it right on top to see how that works out. Okay, and I like how that looks. Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit thinner. Let's see, let's go back to gray. Just make that a little bit thinner. And then slide it on top. Okay, I like how that looks. Okay, so once you're done sizing your, let's make this a little thicker. Once you're done sizing your shadow in your font, you're going to screenshot. And then I'm gonna go over to my Cricut Design Space app. Hit new project, hit the upload, hit select from photo library. The screenshot that we just took. I'm gonna crop it and clean it up. Remove the background. Oops. We're gonna hit next, hit next again, and then we're gonna hit um, cut image. And then I'll just name it Lola. And then we'll hit save. We're gonna grab that image, insert. And then we're gonna slice the two images apart. So we're gonna go to shapes get your triangle or rectangle whatever you want to call it select both layers and then we're going to go to actions and hit slice where is slice slice just like that remove the unnecessary pieces okay so now we have two parts here okay so we're going to go to like i said my plate or my shadow is going to be gold so i'm going to go to edit and then I'm gonna change this to gold. 
and then I'm going to change this to gray and then we're going to move this to the front oops let's see I always get confused with these on here versus using the computer so we're going to go to move to front it's in the front like so and just line it up the best way you can oops didn't mean to do that Okay. Make sure that's locked. Make it a little larger so you can see what you're doing. You know what, guys? I think I'm actually going to take that little bitty piece out of the L. So I'm going to go back to shapes, go to my circle. Let's see, stretch it out a little bit. And I'm going to get rid of that piece there. Select that, and then I'm going to go to weld. Just because I don't want that piece there. Okay, it's gone. Send that back to the front. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. So now we need to make our holes for our um, chain to go through. So I'm going to go to my shapes. I'm going to choose circle and I'm going to choose another circle. Actually, I think I might have go back. Okay, and I'm going to add another circle. Make sure it's locked. Make sure that's locked. Okay. And then. I'm going to put this on top and I'm going to select both these layers and I'm going to center it. I'm going to edit, go to align and hit center. Okay, let me move these out of the way. And then I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to slice. Size that down, and then I see where I'm going to see where I want my holes to be. Move this over a little bit. Okay. I think that's big enough. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. All right. So I'm going to take my Actually, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm sorry. I'm going to go to, is it actions? Yeah, duplicate. Okay, so I got two of them. I'm going to put one here. And then we'll do the other one. Let's see, right about. Mm, let's see. I might have to move that down a little bit. both of these layers maybe I'll make it right there and then that other one can be about right here double check make sure yes that's perfect okay so once I get the holes exactly where I want them I'm going to select all of those layers and then I'm going to hit um, weld Okay, and then I'm going to send this back to the front, arrange center front, and that's what it will look like. Now, so to get the layers, you want to do, let's size this down again, we need a front and a back plate, okay, for the necklace. So we're going to duplicate this. Okay, so we're going to go to actions and then we're going to hit duplicate. And we need to flip this because we need one for the front and we need a piece for the back. So we're going to flip this. 
backwards and then we're gonna flip it horizontally okay so we got our back piece and then we got our top piece um, now our um, for the name we're gonna duplicate this so we're gonna go to action we're gonna go to duplicate I'm gonna leave this one alone because this is the one that's gonna go on top okay and then these are gonna be the laid the layered pieces in the middle so I usually do four. So I'll do four layers, and then I'll do the one that goes on top, which is usually my glittery cardstock or whatever color cardstock, my holographic or whatever color I choose, I decide to choose. So I'm gonna leave that one alone. And this one, we're gonna make four of these. So two, three, four. Okay, we'll make this a different color. So let's go back to, let's see, edit, and then we'll make this, let's just make this a darker gray we'll do that okay so that way it'll cut its own itself okay so we have our four layers for that and then we're going to need a layer for um, the actual plate the in-between pieces for the plate so we need four of those so we're gonna go to actions and we're gonna hit duplicate okay and then we'll make this like a yellowish color or something so we'll go to edit and then we'll make this like a yellow color and then we'll duplicate that four times as well so we'll go to actions well the actions and then we'll go to duplicate four times two three four okay so we have our front plate we have our back plate we have our name that's going to go on top and then we have our in-between layers for our name okay and our in-between layers for our plate so once you put everything together you'll have your name plate you can size them um you can size them to whatever size you think's best i usually do it all depends i usually do my sizes 2.6 by 0 0.9 is a pretty decent size it's not too big it's not too small um but yeah that's how you get your layers and that's how you get your holes for your actual chain okay guys so now i got all my pieces cut out so what we're going to do now is just um glue and layer everything together um with this piece i ended up just i ended up just filling in the holes on the o and the l and the a just because i didn't like how small the cut was going to be so i just went ahead and filled that in um with the weld tool um on design space so the only tools i'm using for this are my tweezers and then I have pliers. I like using the pliers to grip my pieces better. So I'll use those. And um, just my Elmer's glue stick. Okay, so we're going to start with the um, plate shadow. I'll do the plate shadow first. And then I'll do the actual name second. And then we'll do the front and back pieces of the plate so I'll just glue everything and remember um, just make sure you get it doesn't have to be absolutely covered in glue just try to get it on there good enough because remember in the end we're going to end up using the epoxy to seal everything so we're going to get this on here Oops, just trying to get this on here, like so, and then I'll go in with my tweezers, or my pliers, and just pinch, just to make sure everything's lined up perfectly for me, okay, and um, like I said, I'm using four layers of each layer. Okay, let's get the third piece on. Okay, 
have our third piece. Put it on top. Go in with my pliers, pinch. Make sure everything's lined up perfectly. And like I said, I try to match the colors the best that I can uh, as far as like the gold plate. And, um, oh, where is my, let's see, one of my pieces are missing. So let me find that really quickly. I don't know where it went. Um, one second. I lost one of my pieces. And I found it. <laughs> That's the most important part. Okay. We'll move her down here towards the bottom because we'll do her last. Okay, so we got that piece on. And then let's do the fourth piece. And really it's all about um, your measurements. Because you don't want to make the name to plate too big. Well, I guess it all depends on, you know, what the customer wants or just your personal preference of your nameplate necklace. But I don't like to make mine too large and I don't like my shadows to be extremely large either. I just don't like that look. I'm gonna line it up here. And we'll get my pliers and I'll pinch. To bring everything in together. Allergies. Okay. Alright, so I got my layers for my shadow. Okay. So we'll set this aside and then we'll do our name and remember it doesn't have to be perfect because we'll be epoxy and everything together let's just try to make sure it just has like somewhat of a bond on here That one was almost was perfect. See how the pliers just go in there and just pinch everything together perfectly? That's why I use those. You don't have to use them. I just like to use them because it works best for me as far as like getting everything straight, you know? And I'm crazy because I, uh, if it's not, I have like a small Okay, so OCD, and I like for everything to be perfect. If it's not, I'll throw it away and start all over again. Okay, let's go in here, get this lined up good. That's, that one's a little sticky. Let's press down. I don't even think I have to go in with the pliers much on this one because this one was pretty much perfect. Okay. okay, let's put our last layer on here. Let's clean it up. Okay, that's good. Let's get our last little layer on here. Yeah, this is my first time doing like a detailed tutorial 
so just bear with me I'm in the process of trying to help and teach a lot of people in my craft groups you know I want to help as many people as I can I know there's a lot of people out there who are afraid of the Cricut machine and don't know what type of projects to make so that's what I'm here for you can always come to my channel and find something to make. I'm in the process of actually building my channel. So I'll have a lot more how-tos and tutorials and things like that on my channel. Okay, so we got our shadow layered. We have our name layered. Okay, so we'll set those to the side. And then now I'll do my um, my front and back piece. So we'll go ahead and glue the front of the shadow. And then we'll lay the plate on top. And feel free to ask me any kind of questions that you all might have because I'd love to answer them the best to my ability. <laughs> and I just like how like this marigold color cardstock looks with the gold plate. I think it looks really good. But like I said, you can use any colors you want to use. I just like to use the Mary Gold color. Okay, we got the front piece on. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the back. Let's flip it over. We'll do the back side. And you guys, I love making these. Um, I'll do another tutorial on the nameplates with the characters because a lot of people are asking um, what kind of cardstock I use, how do I seal the actual image without the epoxy turning it that wet color. And um, like I said, I'll do a tutorial on that explaining how I do the nameplates with the characters. Those are so much fun. Those are a lot of fun to make. They're so cute and you can personalize them however you want. They're just really fun to make. So we'll get this and we'll layer this on the back side. Oh, it's bright. It's blinding me. <laughs> and I think I got this foil, the gold foil. Uh, I can't really remember. It was Hobby Lobby or Michael's. It was one of those craft stores. I can't actually remember. Because I went to both that day. Because I went to Hobby Lobby first to get the um, gold foil. And they didn't have any. Well, they didn't, They had it, but they didn't have the um, one I usually use. So I had to go to Michael's, which I don't shop there very much. But I do go to Michael's to get my actual chains for my necklaces. So, if you want, um, I guess you can try both of your craft stores just to see, you know, which one you like best. Um, I usually have like a little towel in here to clean up, to clean up my plate, but we'll do that last. Okay, so we got our front of the nameplate, and then we got back side done. Now we're going to lay um, our layered name on top. So we're going to glue the back side of this. Like I said, you don't have to smother it or cover it in um, glue. 
because we're actually going to epoxy. So I gotta hold it. Scrape some of this glue off. Okay, so let's put this on top. Zoom in a little bit. Well, if I knew how to zoom in, I'd zoom in. There we go. Okay. So, we got that piece on. Okay, now let's put our last step on, which is the most important part. A pretty shimmery font. Like I said, y'all can ask me any question that you'd like. I'm telling you guys, once y'all start making these, I'm telling you, you are not going to want to stop. They are so cute. They really are. And they sell, like, I sell a lot of these in my area. I'm from Indiana. Um, I sell a lot of these in my area. And they sell. They sell pretty well. And like I said, they're just all around cute. So we'll layer this on top like that and press down. Yes, that is perfect. That is so cute, you guys. And my best friend, she's been waiting for me to make this necklace forever. I've just been so busy, and, you know, with just life and other crafts and. Uh, so, she's been waiting for her necklace. <laughs> so, I'm finally going to ship it out to her. Okay, so, voila, we have that. And that's how you make, well, that's how I do it. Um, you know, whatever method you want to follow. This is the method that works best for me. Um, and like I said, you can do as many layers as you want to. I think four is like thick enough. Um, I made a customer one and I had, I don't know why, but I did like maybe like five or six layers and it was just way too thick for me. So I had to take some apart. I just didn't like how it looked, but yeah, that's all you do. That's it. And like I said, I'm going to go in and clean up, um, the front and back of it. Well, really just the back of it. You can't really see on the front, but cleaning up really good. Um, so my next video will just show you how I epoxy. Well, not my next video. I guess I'll add it to this video. Um, I'll show you how I epoxy and dry it. Okay, so these are the other materials I use for um, mixing my epoxy. Um, I use these, these are from the Dollar Tree, and you get 24 pieces in each pack. So, um, oh, and this is my epoxy I use, the amazing, the part A and B, um, amazing clear cast epoxy, or resin, or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, you do half and half, so I'll get my two cups. And you don't need much because it's just a small nameplate. So what I like to do, if you look on here, there's like a little line on here on the bottom of the glass. So I just mark it with like a permanent marker. I'll mark it right here on both glasses just so I can ensure I'm getting, because there's no measuring lines or anything on here. So I'll just mark it like that. And then I'll just fill them 
to those fill lines. Um, my part A and B. And then my paint brushes I use. I like I got these from Dollar Tree as well. You get seven in the pack. Um, I like using the smaller fine point tip brushes. Just because you can get in between. You know, when you're probably you can get in between really well on the sides versus using the big fat white brushes. I like using the smaller ones. And when I do it, I do the front first I apply mm, it all depends usually I do one coat but if I feel like it needs two coats of epoxy you'll know if you feel like it needs two coats of epoxy you can go ahead and put two on but um I just go ahead and um spread my epoxy on the front first I'll let that dry I have like a heater I do I use um out back on my patio so I'll turn that on I'll set it on my silicone mat. Also, I use this when I'm epoxy. It's just a silicone mat. I got this from the Dollar Tree as well. And you want to just use this to epoxy your um, nameplate necklace. Just so it doesn't stick to anything else. Okay. So, let's get to mixing. I'll take my part A. It doesn't really matter which one you do first. So I'll just take it. And then I'll fill to the line that I marked. And then I'll do my other part. You're supposed to wear gloves and a mask, they say, when doing this, but, eh, what the heck. It just never bothered me. Use my other part. Mix this together. And I like to pour the thinner one. Part B of the epoxy, when using this brand, it's thinner. Let me do a little bit more. This one's thinner than part A. So I'll take the thinner one and then I'll just pour it into the thicker one like that. And I'll just let it sit like that. And once it's done, I'll mix everything together. Make sure you try to scrape as much as you can out of the cup. Scrape as much as you can. Okay, and then just dis discard the cup. Okay, so we want to mix it up. I usually mix it up for like 60 seconds. Mix, mix. But if you want to wear gloves, I, I mean, you can't eat. They recommend you to wear gloves. They recommend for you to wear gloves, but uh, it doesn't. Maybe I should be wearing gloves. But I've been doing this for a while, so. I'm fine. Oh, mix, mix, mix. And then once I mix it, I let it rest for like another 60 seconds. And then when you're done mixing, just throw your popsicle stick in the trash. Also, your paint brush that you use, you're not going to be able to reuse it. That's why I get the ones I get from the Dollar Tree because they're cheap. So, um, when you're done with your cups, your popsicle stick and your brush, just throw it away. Because you're not going to be able to use it again. They do have silicone brushes. Um, 
but I haven't came across those. Well, I haven't even looked for them, but um, they said those are best because you can just wipe those off, clean those really easily, and then use them for your next uh, epoxy project. Okay, I think this is mixed pretty well. Okay, then just wipe the stick off and then throw it away. Put your epoxy away. Okay, okay so we got our mat. So we're going to like I said, start in the front first. Let that epoxy rest for a couple seconds before we start applying. And it's gonna look like that, like gritty or cloudy, or whatever, but once it dries, it'll it'll dry clear. It won't look like that. Okay, so let's get uh you can leave it on the mat if you want or you can just kind of hold it. Um when I do the epoxy, I do the front part of the plate, do the holes, and then I go here, go in on the sides and seal that as well. But try not to get too much because the stuff is thick. You wanna do like a thin coat, thin layer, especially on the sides because the stuff will drip. Okay, so go in, get a pretty decent amount, and start doing just the top part of it. In between the letters. Hope y'all can see. Sorry. I have my camera rigged because my tripod broke. So I have my camera rigged up. <laughs> so bear with me. And you want to get the hole. Try not to put too much on the holes because it'll you don't want it to drip too bad. you get on the sides that needs to be sealed as well get on the bottom just make sure you get on the outside of the letters too as well as on top not just on top but on the sides too Get in between there. I have to keep looking up at my camera. <laughs> Make sure I got everything in the frame. Cool. Like I said, it don't take much to make these. Um, You've seen how easy it is to design using PixArt and your Cricut Design Space. It doesn't take much. Just like I said, it's just about your measurements. And I think, I don't know if I did post it, the measurements on this nameplate, but if I didn't, I'll post it towards the end of the video. Okay, let's go over here and get the L. This pretty, this cardstock is really, really pretty, you guys. It's really shimmery. I don't think the video does it any justice, but it's super, super pretty. It almost looks like real jewelry. Like, it really does. It's gorgeous. I love it. So pretty. 
and then once this dries um, I do a second part and show you how to do the back side just make sure you get in between make sure you get in between that needs to be sealed as well um, if you're gonna make these for yourself or you know sell them tell your customers not to get these wet okay because it's not real gold and it's not I mean it's not real jewelry I mean it is made out of paper so you know just to wear it for fashion and try to keep it away from water because it won't hold up but I mean if it's out, if you're outside in the rain or something like that and you know if just for a little bit it shouldn't hurt it that's why you got to make sure you seal it all the way around so no water damage happens to it. And just get it all the way around. Yep. And remember, don't do it too thick because it'll it'll um, it'll run. And it'll get on the back of your nameplate, which can cause it to look ugly. So, just do a pretty decent amount, but not too much because it'll drip. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you guys to follow. Just let me know how I'm doing. <laughs> if it was too complicated or difficult or, you know, you didn't understand something, just let me know. And uh, I'll be glad to help you figure it out. the whole all right It's okay if you get a little bit on the back. It's not going to hurt it. It'll be fine. Just don't try to get, you know, too messy with it. And make sure when you're drying it, you keep it on a silicone mat. Because if you're doing it on any other surface, it could pull the backing off, rip it or something. Or stick to whatever surface that you have it on drying. And we don't want that to happen. So, just try to do that. All right. So, I think we pretty much got this covered. And then, once that's done, just leave it on your silicone mat to dry. So, yeah, I just bring it out back on my patio, and then I'll sit here under my dryer for like maybe mm, like maybe half an hour and then I'll go ahead and start epoxying the back of it okay you guys so now that the front is completely dry um, we'll go ahead and epoxy the back side um, I did get a little bit of spillage um, on the back of the plate but that's fine because once I put my um, coat of epoxy on the back, it'll all blend and you won't be able to see it once it's dry. So I already blended me up. 
another batch of epoxy. So we're going to go ahead and put our epoxy on the back side. And as you can see, I got a new paintbrush too. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and get this back side completed. And again, you don't wanna put too much on because it'll run. We don't want it to run. I'm trying to make sure I get everything in the frame so you guys can see everything. Just lightly brush. And then once you get your first layer on, you can go over it a second time. Again, make sure you're not putting too much on because it'll run. We already got the sides done, so we don't have to seal those again, unless you just absolutely want to, but it's not necessary. Once this epoxy is on here, it's on here. It hardens and it seals. And like I said, these are really fun to make. Really, really fun. I think the designing part of it is the most fun part for me. It's the design in the design space for me. <laughs> so. Okay. So now that we get everything covered, I'll go over it again. Just lightly, not too much, just to, you know, ensure you got everything covered. And then we'll put it on our silicone mat and let her dry. Okay, so I think we're done applying the, I've got a piece of hair on here. Here we go. And I think we're all done with the back side. We'll let this dry for about an hour by my heater out back and then 
I'll come back and I'll show you how to apply the jump ring, the chain, the jump rings, the chain, and the lobster clasps or lobster hooks or whatever they're called. And there it is. Okay, guys. So, it's the very last part. Um, so, it's fully dry. Let me find my towel really quickly. Wipe away my fingerprints. Um, so, it's fully dry now. And here's the back side of it. That's what it looks like. And it does have like a little bubble but it's okay it doesn't look bad at all it looks really good now um, I'm going to show you guys how I add my chain and my little rings on okay so as you can see I'm almost at a chain here I got this spool of chain at um, Michaels yeah at Michaels and it's 10 yards of chain and it's like 10 bucks or something nine or ten bucks or something like that maybe 11 but this is my go-to um, I like the sizing of it and the thickness so that's what I choose to use I'll cut me back out really quickly okay just okay so what I usually do is I'll measure, I don't really have an exact measurement for my chain, I just kind of just go with it, you know, I just kind of guesstimate, but you can ask your clients or your customers, um, you know, if they want long chain, short chain, or, you know, what they prefer. So what I do is I usually just measure like this. I'll put one end at one hole and then the other end at the other hole. And then I'll just kind of guess, you know. And I think that this length right here would be good enough. Well, not good enough, but let me see. We'll do this length for her this is for my friend so I think this length is perfect so then I'll just take it and I'll just pull it apart like that and then once I do that I'll close the gap where I pulled it at. I'll close it so you can see I'll just take my pliers and squeeze it shut like that Then I'll take my jump ring. I'll take one of my jump rings and then with my pliers I'll squeeze and use my fingers. Some people use two of these, but I don't have two, I just have one. But if you have two, I'm I'm assuming it'd be easier. But I just have one, so we're gonna do it like this. So I'll just take it, open it up, and then I'll put it through. this end here like so and then I'll take it and I'll put it through the hole on the chain I mean on the nameplate and then I'll just take my pliers and I'll close it shut like that And I'll try to go in and pinch it shut some more. There we go. 
So I got one side done. And then I'll go in on the other side. And then I'll open it up. through here with the chain and then I'll go in put it through the other hole on the nameplate pinch it shut like that usually you hear like a little click once you pinch it pinch it shut and I just like to turn it this way kind of going from the top and pinch it shut like that okay so we got this now up here at the top I find my center and then I'll take it and then I'll pull that apart like that. And this is just how I do it. You can do it however you want to. You can put your chain on however you want to add your chain to your nameplate. This is just the way I like to do it. But you can do it however you want. Open this up. And then we'll put it through here. Put it through our chain. Put it through our chain. Like that, and we'll close it shut. And pinch it closed. And then I'll go in on this side. Pinch that shut a little bit. Take my jump ring. Open that up. Now we're gonna add our lobster hook, which is which are these little things right here. And that on there. And then we'll add it to this end of our chain. Like so. Close it shut. Open it up and add it on there. And there you have it. That's how I do my name plates. Thanks for watching.